Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. And on the subject of that InfoWars reporter contest, which you just saw an ad for, there's a new update article regarding that. Um, also, more information about the submissions process. So I really encourage you to get involved with that. And who knows, you could be appearing on this very show in the not-too-distant future. Now, I'm delighted to welcome a regular and much valued contributor to Infowars.com uh, and an expert really in the field of Agenda 21 and the neo-eugenics population control movement, and that is Yorian Maysan. Yorian, welcome to Infowars Nightly News. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Now, first off, for people who don't know, just tell the viewers about yourself and how you got into writing about these subjects. Well, I actually uh, started out uh, by writing a book uh, with a friend of mine. It's called The Secret of Zionsburg. And, uh, well, it's actually about uh, the um, uh, royal family of Holland, uh, the Oranges, uh, Queen Beatrix being the uh, uh, current day exponent of the uh, entire uh, facade. And um, uh, while doing research on that subject, uh, I, of course, um, uh, came uh, to know the um, habits of um, uh, uh, eugenics. Uh, by the elite, and that's the sex cobra gotha families, which are spread throughout Europe, uh, also um, the UK, of course, uh, changing their name to Windsor. And um, in Holland, that's also uh, by Prince Bernard, uh, uh, important influence uh, uh, in regards to the uh, eug whole eugenics agenda that's being pushed by the uh, elite uh, of, the, of the royalty of Europe. So that's how I uh, uh, like rolled in this information um, uh, and, and well, uh, learned much more about it along the way. Now, your latest article, which is on Infowars.com today, which I read earlier, uh, UN-backed scientists call for megacity population lockup. And this is uh, similar to the Plandopolis agenda that we've covered in the past about herding us into these ghetto cities in the name of, you know, pr protecting the earth from humanity itself. And you've got in there one of the quotes from the scientists um, who was behind this project that you'll talk about. Quote, we certainly don't want them strolling about the entire countryside. We want them to save land for nature by living closely together. And again, you know, just total sneering elitist arrogance, class warfare rhetoric, Yorian, tell people about this uh, planet under pressure organization that you write about in this article and what they're calling for. Well, what they're calling for now is, is, is obviously um, a result of a, a very old agenda. And that agenda is, uh, uh, has been formulated uh, 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 by the term Agenda 21, uh, which actually means um, uh, population reduction. I mean, that's the basic the basic thing about it. Um, it's called sustainability. It's called uh, saving the earth, exactly what you said. Uh, under those names, under those guises, uh, uh, a population reduction agenda is being uh, um, executed. And it's being executed uh, quite effectively uh, uh, so far. Um, but mega cities, uh, like herding the people, uh, closing them in and closing them within uh, the confounds of a, uh, a mega city, of course, being um, a, a prison planet in its own right, every city, uh, a grid, you could say, uh, keeping those people in. Um, and uh, the elite uh, can then uh, roam free around uh, the countryside, which uh, they don't want us strolling through. Um, and uh, the basic agenda is, uh, is eugenics. Uh, it has been for a long time. Aaron Dykes did a lot of important research on that subject. And um, uh, everybody should check his work out also. He made a couple of very important YouTube films about that. And in this article, these scientists behind this group talk about humanity creating this anthropocene environment through man-made climate change. You know, even as all their global warming models are proven completely fraudulent about, you know, CO2. Of course, we know, as you said, the Earth is much cooler now than it has been eons in the past before carbon dioxide emissions from human activity. Um, and they accused us of interspecies genocide when they're the ones advocating genocide themselves. I mean, just go through the quotes that you've got in that article. I think there's one towards the end of the article where they talk about directly reducing human population. 
Right. I think that was the article about the uh, Colorado professor uh, actually uh, 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 quoting the whole uh, anthropogene um, uh, concept, uh, throwing it out there um, and um, adding to that, that uh, people um, have um, uh, uh, little time left uh, to uh, cool the planet and otherwise we should just get rid of those uh, people. That's what the elite uh, states and what this professor professor actually states is we have to reduce current human human numbers. So that he do, he doesn't just say we have to reduce numbers uh, per se, uh, perhaps over the long run, like a mild eugenicist might might suggest. He says just reduce them right now. So that means killing people, killing people outright. And uh, that's that's just one of the quotes he uh, he made. Um, he he wrote down um, in that uh, particular um, um, uh, essay he wrote. Uh, it's called Environment and Ethics or something. Ethics is a term that keeps popping up. Um, and uh, these are very dangerous people. These are people that have to be stopped in their tracks because otherwise we have a very big problem on our hands. And that was. Uh the article was called Professor Prevent Interspecies Genocide, Reduce Current Human Numbers, and that's Philip Cafaro. And in that, which I read earlier, of course, he advocates China's one-child policy directly. He states, quote, China's policies have largely stabilized its population. Well, yes, they have if you consider wild imbalances in males to females to be a stable situation. And, you know, 500 female suicides a day in China many of which are directly attributable to um, the one-child policy. So, I mean, Yurian, this one-child policy in China was brought about as a result of the error-prone policies of Chairman Mao. You know, he, he wanted the population to have, he wanted warrior mothers to have 10 kids so they could go join the communist army. That's what caused China's um, booming population problem. Now they've got something even worse, which is forced sterilization, forced abortion. Um, why do the elite see China as a model for the West? Because it's a, a, a collectivistic uh, society. So I, I think um, uh, the elite uh, considers uh, the West as it is now and as it has been um, uh, much too individualistic. Uh, so they want a more collectivistic. They want a state that actually uh, uh, micromanages the lives of, of, of all the people that uh, that are there. So the collectivistic model, I think, uh, uh, is um, especially suitable for the plans for uh, of the elite, because of um, uh, I mean the, the Chinese have been um, uh, used to uh, like propaganda since 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 the communists came into power, since Mao came into power. Uh, same goes for uh, for Soviet Union, of course, and that's now um, uh, uh, changed a little bit. But uh, I think that's that's the prime uh, driver because they want to use China as the the new engine for the world, the new economic uh, front runner, and uh, we all have to follow in its wake. Now I want to get on to Rockefeller because a big article that you wrote that got a lot of attention earlier this month was. Um, the the Rockefeller, Rockefeller Foundation actively engaged in mass mind control. Tell us about these documents and how um, they illustrate Rockefeller's involvement in mass brainwashing. Yeah, they have. They've been uh, the Rockefeller Foundation uh, funded it. Uh, as far back even as the 20s, I don't even go into that uh, in that particular article, but uh, from the 20s on they uh, funded uh, psychological um, um, uh, research uh, into um, behavior modification, that's how, how they call it. Uh, so that's uh, uh, social and psychological engineering um, and, and, and how the science of that uh, should be developed. And it should not be developed for the science itself, but it should be developed, of course, for, uh, for their purposes, because uh, they've used the uh, uh, results of that research. Uh, and we don't talk about years, we, talk, we don't talk about decades, we're talking about centuries here, uh, that they've refined this technique and, uh, uh, well, uh, put it out to the people. Uh, predictive programming is a, a, a very important part of that, which Alan Watt covers in, 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 in quite some detail. Uh, predictive programming has been um, uh, found to be uh, so effective that it has been uh, uh, research into that has, uh, has continued, especially by uh, that professor called Hovland, which I write about in that article, uh, which even um, who even um, uh, 
uh, did more research on that uh, particular subject, predictive programming, and um, uh, went ahead with that. And in these documents, I was also reading, they actually brag about how they basically recruit media figures and journalists to push their agenda. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, I, I, uh, that's it. Uh, media figures, uh, important ones, uh, they have to be recruited uh, to uh, bind uh, a large part of the of the mindless uh, uh, readers, mindless uh, uh, watchers of, of television programs uh, to their causes. I mean, Angelina, Angelina Jolie is, is a good example of uh, uh, how the UN recruits one, uh, and she probably uh, uh, d d d knows all about it. Um, uh, she, she's intelligent enough, I think, uh, to actually know the agenda behind it. But uh, uh, celebrities are being used. UNESCO uh, said in the 50s, uh, we have to use more celebrities, more uh, people to um, um, uh, reform the education, uh, educational process, because that's how, where young people turn to for their, uh, for their amusement and, and their information, finally. Now, one, one question that springs to mind just off the cuff is, how do you find all these documents? I mean, are you going just finding them on the internet or their leaks or do you have to go to libraries? Where do you get the material um, for all these Rocker Founda Rockefeller Foundation articles? Well, the, the Rockefeller Foundation articles are just posted on their website. I mean, it's their yearly reports most most of the time. And if you, um, well, you just have to uh, learn how to use a, a, a search engine on the internet and you'll find the most amazing uh, information uh, spread all throughout the um, uh, internet. You have to use keywords which the elite tends to use, uh, and usually that's euphemisms for uh, their actual purpose. So you have to uh, uh, Google the euphemisms, um, and uh, by doing that, you can find a lot of information. Of course, the library is is very valuable also. So I do uh, a lot of research uh, in the library. I have to order books and all that uh, just to uh, to get some information. So basically, again, it's about them hiding it in plain sight and throwing it in our face. They advertise it all on their own websites, but they know that 99.9% .9 of people just aren't going to go and look. Which right. brings me to another question, which is, how do we present the threat that this neo-eugenics agenda represents in you know, the modern climate, how do we reach across to people and emphasize the point that it's a, an imminent threat and just not the rantings of eugenicists from 50 years ago as debunkers try to characterize it? I think uh, uh, current events as they unfold uh, are the uh, perfect uh, way to illustrate uh, what these plans are. So I think you have to f uh, um, uh, constantly contrast current information, current events, with uh, the knowledge that has been around for like decades or, or even more. So you can, and you can easily couple that uh, to those current events because actually those current events are results of the plannings which have been done decades ago uh, by the social engineers. So I think that contrast uh, uh, in, uh, in articles, I think everybody should uh, just do their own research and, and, and don't be uh, too uh, 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 perfect about it. Just Right, right, and do the research uh, because uh, we need so much more people getting involved in this um, if, if people care about it. And of course, a major fact is that John P. Holder and the White House science czar, who is now in control of, of that policy directive, specifically in relation to geoengineering, is now in a position of power, having written in his own textbook um, in 1977 about how we need forced sterilizations, mandatory abortions, you know, Im imposed by a planetary regime. So I suppose the fact that the guy who advocated that is now in the White House is all you need to present people with the fact that this is a very real and imminent threat. That's right. That's right. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. And it's also, of course, uh, a, a fact that uh, uh, it's no coincidence that especially this president uh, chooses uh, 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 John P. Holdren for to be his uh, chief uh, chi uh, science advisor. So it's, it's, it's part of the agenda and Obama's part of it. And of course, Holdren is a, a, an old proponent uh, uh, of the entire idea. Well, it's been fascinating, Yurian. Um, your articles are always keenly read, and we'll look forward to the next one on Infowars.com. Um, Yurian Mesa, have you got your own website, just lastly, that you want to plug? 
I don't have a website uh, yet, uh, but I'll make a weblog uh, pretty soon, and uh, I think that's uh, that's good to do uh, right now. Well, we really appreciate your time and look forward to having you back on InfoWars Nightly News. Yuri and Mason, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That's going to wrap it up for this Thursday, March 29th edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We'll see you on the next edition. Good night.